without further ado, our keynote speaker, Diego. Diego Richmond. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, school faculty. Thank you, families and friends. And hello, Garfield class of 2018. Woohoo! <laughs> wow, what an honor to be here. Why are we here? We are here because today a new stage in your life begins. The time to make your own decisions. Soon you'll decide what type of higher education you want to have. You will decide who to surround yourself with as adults. What will your first jobs look like? Whether to focus on a career that allows you to make lots of money or bet on something that you are truly passionate about, regardless of whether there's money to be made. As your commencement speaker today, I want to give you three challenges, three concepts that helped me go from having a job to having a dream job. I hope that my story will help you make your own decisions and above all, allow you to turn your future jobs into dream jobs in much less time it took me to start doing it. So the first challenge I give you, class of 2018, is to exercise the muscle of thinking for yourself. Why is it important to think for yourself? It's the only way to make sure the li your life will be yours. If you spend your life simply living someone else's, then who will live yours? Like this poem by Potter Dale Wimbrough reminds us, when you get what you want in your struggle for wealth and the world makes you king or queen for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that one has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or friends whose judgment upon you must pass. The verdict who counts most in your life comes from the one staring back from the glass. That's the failure to please, never mind all the rest, for he or she is with you clear up to the end, and you've passed your most difficult test if the one in the glass is your friend. So yes, I wish you to read many, many books, but then think and feel on your own. Yes, I wish you to have many mentors, lots of mentors, but then think and feel on your own. I wish you to listen to all the people you respect, but then I wish you to think and feel on your own. Because in the end, you will be just as smart as the questions you dare ask yourself. And if we really are going to exercise the muscle of thinking for ourselves, then a good place to start is asking ourselves, why are we really here? I mean, here on planet Earth, right? We are born without being asked if we wanted to. If we are lucky, we get to live 80, 90 years, and then we must say farewell. Why? Why are we here? Why are you here? Just about when I was your age, this question began to bug me. I researched this question. I asked everybody about it. I took advantage of the fact that humanity has already been researching this matter for centuries. I read all the main theories of why are we here? And I discovered the following. No one really knows. <laughs> So I explored philosophy, inspired by all the philosophers who preceded me. I started to read and think for myself. And my first finding was, if no one really knows the correct answers of why we're here, then all of us humans are on equal level. We are all seekers of meaning. And reading from thinkers like Viktor Frankl, I learned that there is something more important than the question of why are we here. And that is defining what are we here for? And this leads me to the second challenge I give you, class of 2018, and that is to take ownership of creating a powerful what am I here for, for yourselves. Each of us humans have a mission, and that is to invent our mission. In a world where nobody can tell you with certainty why you are here, only you can decide what are you here for. What are you here for? And how do you know the, question, the answer is really yours and not a copy-paste from others? When I was in high school, we were three best friends, Daniel, Germán, and me. 
This is a true story, by the way. <laughs> One day, Herman's parents won the lottery. Four million dollar jackpot. So having seen this up close, from that day, not a single week of my life went by without me playing a lottery ticket. <laughs> the truth is, long before Herman's parents won the lottery, I already dreamed of earning a lot of money so I could retire early. My grandfather had been able to do it, and my father dreamed of doing it as well. It seemed the message was clear. Diego, work hard so you can stop as soon as possible. <laughs> but stop to do what? That wasn't all too clear. What was it that I dreamed after winning the lottery? I guess I would spend my days relaxing on the beach, learning to play the guitar, learn to sing, writing my autobiography. <laughs> after high school, I got a job in an American tech company. I worked remotely from Argentina, where the country where I grew up. And I started earning unimagined salaries for a 20-year-old living there. I love computer science, and even more to be able to do it in cool tech companies. So just in case my lottery plan would take some time, I decided to work hard in the tech industry so I can retire early. I can retire at 40 years old. Lottery or early retirement, whichever happened first, the objective was clear. Not working. After graduating from university, I moved to the USA, and soon after that, I started working at Microsoft Corporation. During the next 15 years, I worked in software products like Messenger, Outlook, Windows, and my beloved Xbox. But the truth is that by not thinking for myself, I spent 15 years of my life working really hard to achieve something that wasn't really my what for. It was someone else's. After all, early retirement seems like a good enough plan for anybody, right? And even though I enjoyed my work those 15 years, not leaving my own what am I here for meant I was not paying attention to my deepest passions. You see, as my chances of achieving my goal of early retirement improved, I also began to feel a void inside me. Was I really living the life I wanted to live? Throughout these years, I was blessed with many mentors who helped me think. One of them was a Microsoft executive named Eric who had successfully retired early to sail the world and live on his boat. But he later had returned to his job at Microsoft. In this case, I was not so interested to know how did Eric manage to retire early. I was more interested in knowing why did he come back to work when he didn't need to? Eric told me, I came back because I realized I still wanted to have a positive impact in the world to be part of something bigger than me. And that is much easier to achieve when you're part of a team and when you have a great platform to do so. Wow, Eric response forced me to think outside my box. Maybe not everything was about early retirement after all. At third glance, it may seem that the best thing that can happen to us in life is not having financial needs. But we probably think that way because we never had enough money to know that when the economic problems are over, other challenges start appearing. Eric knew this because he had been there. If we all knew that, we might stop thinking that money or traditional success are the definitive solutions in life. So Eric left me with a new powerful question. How would I live my life today if I knew that winning the lottery doesn't mean happy ever after? Knowing that, it made more sense to be happy along the journey. And for me, that meant pursuing my passions before retirement, learning to play the guitar, learning to sing, writing my book before I turned 40. But there was something else. What I most wanted to do now was help others find meaning in their lives too. By that time, I hired a coach. I told him about my dreams, and he challenged me, asking, Diego, why does work have to be separate than your passions? How can your passions for poetry, music, inspiration make you a better leader at work? So I discovered a new what am I here for that felt more of my own. And that is, I was here on earth to prove that people can be happier and more productive if they integrate all their passions at work. Inspired by this, I wrote an email to Microsoft leader of human resources, Kathleen Hogan. And that's how I went from an Xbox engineer 
to leading the area of university recruiting. I was the new leader of the global team at Microsoft in charge of recruiting talent from all the universities around the world. And there I started work wondering what single project would allow me to make the most impact on the university recruiting team, on the candidates we want to attract, but also at the same time integrating my passion for inspiration, poetry, music, science. The results of this brainstorm was a concept called Dream Makers, a concept that soon started coloring everything we did at university recruiting. I started calling my team Dream Makers because they help enable dreams for thousands of students every year. And this takes us to the third challenge I give you today, class of 2018. Be a dream maker and turn your passion into part of the solution. I believe that we are all called to be dream makers. Being a dream maker is about inventing the life you want to live. Dreaming plus making. Dreaming is the key to see far into the future. Making is the magic tool to transforming us into what we want to become. Check this out. A, a few years of study and you become an architect. A few years of study, you can call yourself a doctor, a software engineer, a musician, a poet, an artist. We become what we do, because doing is what makes us. Therefore, I advise you not to wait for the perfect what for, or the perfect passion, or the perfect dream to begin to act. It rarely works that way. I propose that you simply dare to be what's next. Focus on taking that next step. The truth is that life is not meaningful. <laughs> life is neutral. Life is what it is. Only you can make it meaningful for yourself by getting passionate about it. And you start by being passionate about something. In my team, we have created a space we call From Job to Dream Job. It is a dream tank in which everyone is invited to explore how their passion can be part of the solutions we need. So we have recruiters like Dave, who is channeling his passions for sports by increasing the students at student athletes we hire at Microsoft. We have Michael, who is turning his passion for filmmaking into a great tool for the team. We have Kevin, who is busy awakening the dreams inside of the other recruiters. And we have Sasha, who is here today. Please stand up, Sasha. Who, who, who channeled her passion for transforming people by creating a mentorship program for high schools. In fact, I want to announce that today we are launching the Garfield High School Mentorship Day at Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. You will benefit from a day of mentoring from Microsoft Professional. This event will take place this August and you can find all the details in the Garfield High School Seattle app, how to sign up. The truth is, with a job like this, I, I'm no longer thinking about retirement. Throughout this journey, I found something that no lottery can give me. A what am I here for that I'm passionate about. I no longer wish to stop working. And I, wish, I now wish to keep doing what I love. So, should you pursue a career that allows you to make a lot of money? Or something you're truly passionate about? And to that I say, why not both? To finish, thank you. to finish, I will share with you some tips on how to turn a job into a dream job in the form of a song. After all, if my what am I here for is about helping people be happier at work, integrating all their passions, then why not experiment with it tonight and see if my passion for music can make my job as a commencement speaker better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is happening. This is an original song we created thinking of you and all the students who accept these challenges to exercise the muscle of thinking for yourself. Create your own powerful what am I here for? And turn your passion into part of the solution. Now, uh, I'm going to need some backup singers. So I've asked the senior officers to join me in harmony. So please come over to this side of the stage, yeah. Bring those, bring, that, bring those mics, bring them closer. 
I actually would like Sasha to come to stage and my daughters, Lulian and Flor, my, my musical partner, Guillermo, come on stage. Very close, very close. Very close. Closer, closer, closer. All right, this is happening. We start with your positions. Okay, DJ, DJ, hit it. Hit the music. We dedicate to you, class of 2018, the song Dream Makers. Think outside the Xbox. Dare to be what's next. Bring out your full potential. Where do you wanna go today? Try to make your point into a PowerPoint soon. Not even the sky's the limit. There are footprints on the moon. Let's give hope to the hopeless and voice to the voiceless. Let's go to those places we have only dreamt before. We all have a dream. We all have some fear. There to be the call. We are dream makers after all. I think they're doing pretty good, these guys. All right. Second verse. Open up your windows. Get a wider outlook. Life is so much easier with a shared point of view and a laptop. Be someone of world. A sure way to excel. Because we are all linked to each other in this small nano quantum world. Let's give hope to the hopeless and voice to the voiceless. Let's go to those places we have only dreamt before. We all have a dream, we all have some fear. Dare to be the cold, we are dream makers after all. We all have a dream, we all have some fear. Dare to be the cold, you are dream Congratulations, Garfield, class of 28.